Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new week of our morning studies. And uh, we're going to continue on with uh, what we've been doing in the book of Judges. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have this morning to open your word and to receive light and strength uh, for this day and for the time ahead. We just ask, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, that we can know that you are near and that you care about our situations. We pray for each one who's struggling. We ask that you can watch over them, that your angels can protect them, and help us, Lord, to be obedient to your word, to follow in the things that, that you have shown us. Be with us now in this study. May you bless each one, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Um, so he, uh, on Thursday, uh, we had we had gone, gone over this line. Uh, there was lots of different things that we had discussed uh, uh, the last thing we had discussed was regarding April 26th, and um, there was, we looked at some of these other charts and lines, and uh, trying to see here. So there was some little points that I wanted to bring up that weren't really brought up in the study directly. So... Regarding this uh, period of time here, so when we look at um, September 23rd, uh, 2017, we have 777 days to November 9th. Now, we know that there's 252 days to uh, July 18th, right? So... That's, that's well understood. And if we add 77 to 252, 777 to 252, what do we get? One zero two nine. Yeah, so we get this number 1,029. Now, um, this number has shown up lots of times. And, and I can't remember how many times this number has shown up, but it, it's simply just 777 plus 252. Um, but it's shown up in spans of time in the Old Testament. Uh, so I've noticed it, but never really paid any particular attention to it. So, um, so when we look on this line, then, if I wanted to put this in and... I don't know how significant it is. It's just something that um, that we have here. So um, so this is one thousand and twenty nine days. So 1,029 days is 147 weeks. Now, what's the significance of that? Well, it's um, 147 is the age that Jacob died. And then from the Sunday along 321. Yeah. You have 1477. So 
So, so you have 147,000 plus seven. So maybe you can maybe see like a numeric connection there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we know, of course, it's um, it's uh, twenty one. Um, uh, well, I guess how to put it, you got forty nine. Uh, so seven times seven is forty nine, right? And then, so this would be three periods of forty nine. But just another simpler way to deal with that is it's uh, 21 times 7 is 147, right? So Aran has put that there, I believe, right? So, so this is a symbol that is derived from the symbol for midnight, July 21st. So it produces this, this number, just like when you take uh, July 18, right, and you multiply... Uh, seven times 18, you get 126. And then, so we've recognized this before. Um, so obviously as a symbol of 147 weeks, it has significance. Now, um, so whether this is significant or, or what would it mean? And, and I'm gonna introduce in here um, a study that Iran did, Iran did, um, but before I do that, I just want to look at, uh, this other date. So if we're going to go, so this is sort of unrelated to this study, maybe, right? So when I say maybe, I'm not really certain. I'm going to move this line over just hang on. Um, if we go uh, this number of days from here, so I don't know how to do this. I guess I'll just copy this. So remember, this is the date in which I came to understand the symbol of July 18 as, or I didn't understand, I understood it before that, but I presented at Lambert Church, right? And it's, it's a date that's a failed prediction, September 23rd is the revelation sign prophecy. And I probably should put that in there that it's revelation, uh, revelation 12, right? Uh, that's that's the, the basis of that prediction. So it's, uh, it fails at least the way that the Protestants apply it. Now I believe that it's actually a correct understanding of that verse in an application of that verse. We know that the, the verse is referring to the birth of Christ, the woman clothed with the sun, moon under her feet, a crown of 12 stars, and she's pained to be delivered, right? And this, this great red dragon is seeking uh, to devour this man child that's gonna be born. We know that that has to do with pagan Rome, the time of Christ, uh, but it's also Satan. Right, Ellen White says regarding the dragon of Revelation 12. But the sign that's seen is in the heavens, right? And it's it's not seen anywhere at that time, any any other time in history, except on September 23rd, 2017. And so those that do futuristic interpretations of prophecy look at that verse, see this sign in the heavens, say. Well, 1260 days are talked about. So 1260 days are going to happen um, until some event. And of course, it's usually going to be the second coming of Christ. And then, of course, because they believe in the secret rapture, they put the secret rapture on September 23rd, 2017. But that doesn't occur because obviously that's a false interpretation of prophecy. But it doesn't mean that there isn't some truth there as far as that sign. And that sign relates to our line. I'm not saying that's the primary application of, of that verse, but I'm saying in the context of our movement, that becomes significant, right? So anyway, we have obviously 147 weeks to July 18, 2020. It's 12, uh, uh, 
1,029 days. Now, if I take this and I go uh, from here to here, I'm gonna get a date, which we don't have on this line, but a date which we had noted previously. So I'll just grab one of these here. do that let's do this okay now the date is um this here This date is going to be May 13th, 2023. So what was this date? It wasn't a major part of our studies or anything. It's just something we had as a discussion. That's when your sister-in-law died. It was also the 92nd birthday of Jim Jones. Okay. So, yeah. So there is... Um, so this date, May 13th, 2023, is important to me because it's, um, yeah, the, the death of my sister-in-law who was married to my brother, Dave. And um, so this happens to be 1,029 days after July 18th. Now, it also then is 504 days from December 25th. 2021, right? That that should make sense to people because we're going to take, or is it 504? Am I doing that right? Um, yeah, so 504, yeah, so it's 504. That's because we know it's 525 days to December 25th from July 18, 505 plus Five five twenty five plus five hundred and four is ten twenty nine, right? So we know that this is then two times uh, two fifty two days. So this is five hundred and four. Okay, so we start to see some of these, uh, the significance of this structure. Now, the main uh, thing here for me personally, not with the death of my sister-in-law, is that it's uh, 11,900 days from the day that my brother Dave died. So that's... Um, uh, October 13th, 1990, right? So uh, if I could do it this way. Now that number 11,900 is 32 years and seven months on the Gregorian calendar and 33 years and seven months on the Islamic calendar. Right. So we've got, and of course, October 13th is an important symbol. Right. And then Stephen is going to introduce the idea that if we take another 504, we're going to get 1533. Now that that should be obvious to us because we know that what we're doing here, what we have in here is there is a 273, right? Because that's how we're going to get 
that 525 days, we're going to add 252 plus 273. Right? And then what we're adding is we're adding uh, four more. So we add 252 again. We get 777. And then we add 252. And we get 1029. And we add 252. And we get 1281. And then we add 252. And we get 1533. So that's uh, 5 times 252 plus 273. 5 times 252 is 1260. So we had these in our lines in other places. And that's why I've seen that 12, uh, uh, 1029 days, 1029 days. I've seen it in our lines before, but I just simply didn't think anything of it. I mean, I thought of it, but I didn't know what to think of it. Now, if we count another uh, 252 days from this May 13th, 2023, we come to January 20th, 2024. Now, I don't know what that means. It's the 11th day of the eighth month. Um, I have no idea if it means anything. I'm just saying that if we're going to count from November 19th, uh, 2019, we could actually count 1,533 days, and it would bring us to January 20th, 2024. But I don't know if that means anything, right? So, so it's just a, it's an interesting uh, point that we have this structure. Um, we just don't know what it means, right? Is, is that fair enough to put this here in this line? Because we haven't really related it specifically to this line. That is, it relates to some line that has September 23rd uh, in it, 2017, and July 18, which we have other lines that have this. But it's just we're noticing it here at this time. In last week's study, I noticed it. And now I've noticed this connection with... Um, the death of my sister-in-law and so um and so there was is this is it 504 days just trying to figure out what what i'm doing i don't know if this is quite right i've got to check this again just what am i doing wrong um Okay, so that's right. Um, okay, so if I go here. Right, and the other thing, the other point that we had noticed, March 27th, that's the other one. That's what I was looking for. So if we go for March 27th, we're all gonna also going to have the 777 days, right? So you know, we could, um, we have the 504 days here, obviously, but we also have, because we have 273 days here from March 27th to December 25th, we have from March 27th, 2021, we have 777 days. And there's 319 days till the next March 27th. So that means from March 27th, um, in 2024, is that what you're saying, Ron? Right. Okay. Now, now we had this this date. Now, other people had uh, predicted or used that date, March March 19th or March 13th or May 13th. Pardon. Um, I believe other people were looking at that date. I know they were looking at uh, some other dates. 
but um, I'm trying to remember everything that other people do. Um, right. So anyway, if we go here to this date, I'll bring this down like this. Right. We also have the 777 days here. What did I do? I didn't copy this here. I'm going to have to. Needed to copy this. Sorry. I wanted to copy this. I mean, so this almost seems like an aside, but sometimes we just need to take note of these things um, because they might be significant later on. So we're just going to. here Oops. so whether this means anything it's just that we have this structure and whether this should be on this line or some other line i have no idea but that's that's where we're placing it right now just because we've noted it okay so hopefully people are happy with that now we know then uh if we count 319 days then from May 13th, 2023, we should come to March 27th and we can see the symbols there for the 391 years, right? So we come to March 27th again. And that's simply because um, if you add uh, 391, plus 777. 391. Oops. You get 1168, right? Is that what we would do? Okay, 1168. The, anyway, I can't remember what that, the significance of that was. Anyway, that's, we're put, we put this on this line, whether this belongs on this line or not, we don't know. But we put it there. It's not one of the dates on the line, this May 13th. But I think it's significant, this span of time from September 23rd to July 18th. It's just that we have these dates on other lines. But here it's tying these two lines, Jotham's and Abimelech's, are two parallel lines that we place one after the other, right? So we're just placing them in succession, even though all of these um, way marks in Jotham's line are just the answer to uh, Parminder's ideas of time setting, right? So it's going to develop that answer, but it's going to be expressed in these dates that follow within our movement. So once we get to November 9th, this movement then uh, begins these, um, these dates that are going to be connected symbolically to these other dates. So in that seven year period of time, we have light that's given to this movement that's then going to be expressed in this period of 777 days. And that's the all of the fig and the vine that are going to reject this uh, call, this call from the trees to be made king, but the bramble is going to accept it. And that's going to be connected with Colin's uh, prediction. So that's going to be the symbol of the bramble. It's not something that's solid. It's not going to bear fruit. It's not going to provide shade. And then, of course, we have these these this other date. So we have the another date that we had noted that's also uh, 1029 days and is connected to these other dates. So whether that's that should be on this line or some other line, I don't know. Right. But we're putting it there for now. 
Now, the thing that we are supposed to be doing is, and that we haven't been doing completely with these lines yet that we started to do was placing uh, the Bible verses, the fulfillment of these uh, this application, putting the verses. Now, I ended up not saving the file and my computer shut down. And so I don't remember what I put here. I'm going to have to, I know I put, um, I believe we put nine verse five here as this July 17th, 2015. And then I have these other dates that um, aren't filled out here, but um, we can see that if we, um, where is it here? So this was Jotham's line. And so we have these dates here. So I have to take these dates and put them in there. So I just haven't done that yet. So these are the different uh, camp meetings. Um, I'm doing it this way. So this was the camp meeting, not the camp meeting, but the School of the Prophets. And in 2016, uh, that's where I'm going to be presenting uh, the prophecy of Josiah, the 391.5, right? Um, I'm pretty sure Stephen remembers all of that. And then... Um, the other one was this date here, so that needs to go in there. Uh, I'm going to do it this way. So in 2017, this is going to be September 23, and this is going to be uh, the 187. And that's going to be um, the other thing I put there. Revelation 12, right. So that's the Revelation 12 sign. So I'll put that in here, this one. And then in 2018, uh, the significant date there. Um, now, when it, when it came to 2018, obviously we have this October 13th, 2018 to September 7th, um, 2019. It's 329 days. And that's going to relate to this whole uh, structure. So we got that in there. And then what we placed at um, here was this November 15th date. And now we're going to have this, uh, I guess what we would have is November 9th here. So we'd probably take this one. So we're just putting November 9th here. Okay, does that make sense to people? That's Jotham's line. We have these, these various states. Now we need to put the verses that illustrate this. <clears throat> so let's look at the scriptures here.
So we said 9 verse 5 uh, related to uh, these 70 persons on one stone. So we put 9 verse 5 as this event, which was July 17th, the 26th day of the fourth month symbol. So this is going to be um, this... uh, these 70 persons being killed on one stone. But the Jotham, the youngest son of Jeroboam, was left for he hit himself. And so we're, we're taking that verse and we're saying, well, that's being marked on July 17th, 2015, in where the symbol, the 26th day of the fourth month, is first uh, presented to this movement, that camp meeting. Right. Now... How do we do this? Can we take anything from this verse to help us understand this? Now, here we have, of course, 70 persons. This would relate to the 70 weeks. Now, the study that's being presented is the study dealing with the 26th day of the fourth month. It's it's the book of uh, Revelation chapter 9, right? Josiah Lich's prophecy. That's what I present in 2015. Is this the correct date and the correct verse for us to understand this? Is there something about what's being found there? We know it's going to relate to later on, the 26th day of the fourth month is going to relate later on to this prediction regarding July 18th. But back in 2015, it's just a piece of the puzzle put in place. And, and now it's it's in the context of these 70 sons of Gideon or Jeroboam, as they're called here in verse 9, being killed upon one stone. So how does this relate to the 70th week? Or does it? Or should we have some other date in 2015 that relates to this? If this whole premise is correct. Okay, so, yeah, so we take this, as Dwight asked, is the one stone equal to Golgotha? Um, So we had been directed to, uh, by Angela, when we were doing this study, um, uh, do you remember what the verse was, Angela? Was it uh, the stones which the builder rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? I know it had to do with a stone. Isaiah, well, I know there's a, it's Psalm 118, 22, I think is one of them. But there's one in Isaiah about a stone that was rejected also. But I know that I had referred to Isaiah 8. But I think that was, that was connected with another verse. I don't know. I'm all scattered. You, you, okay, you went to Isaiah what? 8 last week. Yeah. But now I forget why. <laughs> yeah. Well, was it a stone that was being referred to in Isaiah or was it? Yeah, I don't remember now. Uh, I know it was important. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah. Well, I know, yeah, so Psalm 118, 22, of course, the stone which the builders refused has be, has become the head of 
this headstone at the corner. Um, I think it was, um, we have Isaiah 8 too that talks about a stone. He shall be for a second. Yeah, second. and I had referred to that. Yeah. Um, and then we have Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion a foundation stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Right. So judgment also will I lay to the line in righteousness to the plummet and hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies and the water shall overflow the hiding place. OK, so um, I know there's something we're missing here. Right. Um, OK. So we're just going to have to go back and look at this verse and see what else is there. Okay, so um, so we, we obviously know that this 70 sons being slown, slain and the one stone is going to refer to that 70th week right? Christ is going to be slain in the midst of the week. And connection with that stone is we have Jotham. So Jotham's the youngest son of Jeroboam. He was left for he hid himself, right? And um, so that's what we have with, with Jeroboam. But we don't have anything that I see here that relates to the prophecy of Revelation 9. But that's where, you know, we were putting this verse. We we're saying that this was going to relate to 2015. And in 2015, it's this study relating to the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, of course, that does relate to July 18. But this more relates to the week of Christ study. Now, the week of Christ study um, isn't really going to be developed and presented until 2018. Was it 2015 that that fellow Frost uh, started to talk talk about the Nashville prophecy? Well, yeah. So we have obviously the 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 writings of Ellen White that hadn't been published. The unpublished writings are going to be released in 2015, and that's going to be on what date was that? I think that was the the 16th of July. The 16th of July. Yeah, so two years before your uh, presentation of Ezekiel. Right, so two years. So it's going to be on the 16th of oh, July. No, one, one year, is it? One year, yeah, one year. Okay, so a year later. Um, and... Now, in 2015, now I have here that the camp meeting started in July, I mean, July 17th. This is a camp meeting in Alberta. Um, I don't think it, I mean, that's the day that we arrived. I don't remember if anybody presented on July 17th, but um, uh, the camp meeting starts there. I know I'm going to present... Um, more in the middle of the week. I'm not going to present on the on the Sabbath or on Friday night. Uh, I can't remember if somebody presented Friday night or not. You could probably look up the schedule. But I put 17th of July in 2015. Because um, that's when everybody arrives. Um, July 18th is going to be the Sabbath there. But again, you know, none of this relates to um, the symbols that are here in Judges 
chapter five, nine, verse five, right? We have 70, um, but we can't relate any of this directly to, uh, to that date. Now we're saying that Ellen White's writings were released uh, the 16th of July. So the day that I have before this, and, that, and a year later to that day, is I'm gonna do the presentation on the 391.5. Right. So uh, in in Arkansas. So, so I don't really have a, a good good answer to this of, of how we would look at this, how we would take this verse and apply it. Right. So is there something that we're missing here? Is it maybe it's not really understanding the significance of what happened in 2015. Because this idea of Jotham, who's the youngest, who's going to be left, he's going to hide himself, right? That's that's what happens in verse five, right? So he's gonna he's gonna hide himself and he's not gonna be killed. And then in verse nine, or verse six, pardon me, of chapter nine, um, all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo. Yeah, so they, they're released on the centennial of her death. And that was purposeful, right? That is, that's why they chose that date. It was going to be 100 years from the day that she died, right? July 16th, uh, 1915. So on 2015, they're going to release her unpublished writings. Um, now, it, I mean, it's interesting that they chose to do that. Whether they, you know, just, it just happened to be convenient at that time and thought, oh, well, that's a good day to do it. Um, but, but that's the date they chose. Um, so it's obviously it has significance this July 16th. Um, So, okay, well, let's, let's address this then. Um, let's see if I can find this. Just take a second here, just hold on. Okay, so what I'm going to bring up here, this is a diagram that Iran did. This, which he, he, he uh, put in the chat here before everybody else got on. Um, now, this is um, going, it starts on the birth of Ellen White. So she's born November 26th, 1827. And she's going to die on July 16th, uh, 1915, right? Now she's going to fall on February 13th, and that's going to be 153 days to her death, right? So we have that 153 symbol. And then she's going to have her first funeral. So that's going to be at, um, at the, on the lawn at Elmshaven. Is that correct, Ron? It's, it's going to be by her home. Anyway. Yeah, I think it was on mute. Okay, yeah. And then uh, the next day, she's going to have a second funeral. Um, and where's that going to be? Uh, that's at a camp meeting, I think. Okay. And then finally, her third funeral, um, that's going to be at Oakland. Uh, I think it's in Michigan. Michigan? Okay, that one's in Michigan. But then her burial is not going to occur until August 26th. Right. Okay. And now her burial is on August 26th. Uh, 1915. The Julian date for that is August 13th, 
and August 13th is the day that her husband was um, buried. So James White was buried August 13th. So one of the things you see here is you have August 13th and July 18th. So August 13th, James White's funeral and Ellen White's first funeral, funeral uh, is July 18th. So we have the symbol of Palmoni, 813, and then 718. 718 is the complement of 813. That is, if you add... Um, So what do we do here? So we take, yeah, so if you add July 18, 187 to 813, you get 1000, right? So those are called complements. And so that occurs here with these two dates. Um, now the significance here has to do in, in this context, we're talking about a death of a person. Also we're talking about funerals. Um, and this relates to this idea that people's births and deaths can have symbolisms attached to them, symbols attached to them. There's more here than that. Um, obviously, the 13 days difference, once you take the Julian and the Gregorian date in 1915, there's going to be uh, 18,720 minutes. So it's 34 years and 18,720 minutes. Uh, between the death of James White and, uh, or it's actually the burial or the funeral of James White and the burial of Ellen White. Um, so I'm not, you know, so obviously that's kind of interesting. So it's. Uh, yeah, that's what, that's what allows you to say 13th day of the 35th month. I mean, the, the 35th year. Yeah, the, yeah, so then we have the, um, so it's the 35th year, and it's the 13th day of the 35th. Yeah, 13th day of the 35th year, which you could write out. I mean, it, it's like equal to 1335 again. Uh, 1335. And then the number of months is 10,053 months. Right, or three times 351 months. So again, you keep getting this 153, and you also have the July 18 symbol. So 1827, the year of Ellen White's birth, that gives us that 1872, just in a different order, right? So these, what we're trying to say here is that we have these symbols the symbol of July 16th is a symbol of Ellen White's death. But it's going to be connected to July 18th, right? Um, you know, it's not often that people have this many funerals and then a burial later on, but I guess it does happen. Um, but the the importance of, of the day of her death and then the funeral two days later. Um, and then at the 32,008 points to August 6th for James White's death. So I still don't fully understand. Um, so James White dies on August 6th, right? Right, which is 8-6 eight, in 8-6. Eight, 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 six days after the start of the year is Mar March 28th. Okay, so March 28th is the 86th day of the year. Okay. Well, it's not the 86th. It's, um, it's 86 days after the start of the year. Okay, so it's the 87th. Um, now, August 6th, of course, is also a symbol for... Uh, 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 Hiroshima, because that's going to occur on August 6th and um, in 1945. And, and so we have, of course, the symbol for that. It is the 26th day of the fourth month. But none of this really helps us. I, I mean, I just wanted to refer to this because of this, 
this July 16th date. And also the connection, the idea that these are connected with um, births and deaths and funerals and things like that. Um, yeah, the note about July 16th is that's how I found everything to begin with. Because yeah. if we weren't talking about July 16th, I wouldn't, wouldn't have looked at this. Right. So, so July 16th becomes this sort of thing that opens up these lines. And now in 2015, so again, we're looking at this chart. I have 2015, and we're trying to say that this is Judges 9, verse 5, but we don't have anything that attaches this to Judges 9, verse 5. Now, we could attach it to, um, I mean, this is attached to the 26th day of the fourth month, this, this date because right, that's what I what I'm going to present at that camp meeting. Uh, but we have July 16th. This is the day after Ellen White's writings are released, right? And it's the day it's it's going to be a hundred years to the day. The next day, July 18th, is going to be um, the anniversary of Ellen White's funeral, right? But this is the date I have in 2015 that we marked. We have the symbol, the 26th day of the fourth month. But we just have this verse 9, verse 5, Judges 9, verse 5. Does any of this help us to connect that verse with the death of the 70 sons on one stone and the one being left? Does this in any way relate to this? And, and see, part of this, when we go back to this line, the period of darkness has to do with this covenant with Baal, time setting. Um, and we're going to have this light that's revealed to this movement. Now, what if we, we just said that this was, um, because this is going to be, of course, the Mayan calendar date, right? That's going to be part of this line. We're going to have this light that's revealed, uh, dealing with line upon line, and that December 21st, 2012 date is going to start this line. And we're using Judges 831 for that. And then we have the formalization of this message. And we're going to drive that from Judges 9, verse 4. Um, and, and in that one, uh, in 2014, uh, we're going to deal with that symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. Now, how did we derive that in uh, in Judges uh, 9, verse 4? Why did we use this verse? And they gave him three score, ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Bareth, wherewith Abimelech hired vain light persons, which followed, uh, which followed him, right? And so why did why could we take nine verse four and connect it to June twenty second to Ezra seven nine to back to um, June twenty second, two thousand eleven? So this is the third year anniversary of that. I mean, we have this this payment, but you know, this is the the silver out of the house of Baal Bareth. We're we're sort of tying that loosely to Ezra seven nine. I don't know if we remember our reasons for doing this uh, with Baal Bareth we have this number 1170 and we know if we take um, 11 times 70 we get uh, 
70. We're going to get 770, right? And we also use that as a symbol because if we take 11 times 17, we get 187. So this is going to relate us to uh, the prophecy of Lamech. So 9 verse 4, um, we're just tying it to this story of Ezra 7, 9. That's how we're doing it. So what can we do with 9 verse 5? Because we're, again, we're going to have now these the killing of these three score and ten persons upon one stone. Now, uh, the word stone is the word eben, right? Like in eben ezer, a stone of remembrance. Uh, the here, word here for one is ichad, which means uh, means united. Um, So again, is there anything that we can take here? This three score and 10, this 70. Should be M. Or should we just look for some other verse here? Do we see anything here that ties us to the 26th day of the fourth month symbol. No one has any thoughts on this or ideas that can help us. My brain's hurting from thinking, so. Okay, so, so we have July 16th in 2015. So let's, let's take a look at, so we have July 15th or 16th, pardon me. And we have July 17th as significant dates. Now, we could just say the Sabbath, July 18th. This is supposed to be the empowerment of this message. Should we just take the July 16th date as the significant, significant date? But we also need that symbol, the 26th day of the fourth month. But then can we tie this to the 70 weeks? Is there any symbol here 
that ties us to the 70, 70 weeks or the 70th week, the week of Christ. Um, well, July 16 of 2015 is 70 years exactly from Trinity. Okay. So there's 70 years from the first nuclear nuclear attack or nuclear bomb that's tested, right? Okay. So we have that, that first nuclear test. That's going to be July 16th. Now, when that testing happens on July 16th, that's going to be midnight. Um, that's going to be the fifth day of the fourth month in 1945. Uh, in this case, it's not in uh, 2015. Now, um, in 1915, yeah, no, they're working on the test, but the explosion is not midnight. Yeah, so, but I'm saying the date is the fifth day of the fourth month. All right. So the date that they, they test this. But yeah, so we have, anyway, July 16th. We have July 18th for Ellen White's burial. That's going to be the fifth day of the fourth month. July 18, 1915 is also going to be the fifth day of the fourth month. But is any of this helping us? I mean, we're kind of stuck here, I think. If we're going to say that 9 verse 5 is the verse that represents this way mark, I still don't see anything in this verse. But I might be missing something. I might be missing the significance of what this camp meeting was about. Because I just put, you know, what I presented. These are these are camp meetings. Some of them are things that, that I've done. Some of them aren't. So. But if we take Ellen White's writings in 2015... No, the, the, the burial, or not the burial, the funeral in July 18, in 1915. So she dies on July 16th. On July 18th, should, they're going to have the first funeral. That's at, at Elms Haven. And that date on the biblical calendar is the fifth day of the fourth month. July 16th, 1945 when they test the first nuclear bomb, that's going to also be the fifth day of the fourth month, but it's July 16th, the day of Ellen White's death. So it's going to be 50 years after Ellen White dies, or 50 years, that'd be 30 years after Ellen White dies to the day, they're going to test the first nuclear bomb. And then 70 years later to the day, they're going to release Ellen White's writings. 
Now, the symbol that's here, when we look at Jotham's line, is um, is related to uh, these symbols. Uh, Jotham means Jehovah is perfect. As the youngest and a survivor, he represents the last day's remnant. Yep, so we would agree with that. But we need to find a date in 2015. If this premise is correct of how we've done Joth Jotham's line, that's going to relate to these verses. So this is about time setting, right? This is about the false time setting of Parminia and light that comes to this movement to counteract it. Now, definitely the release of Ellen White's writings, the significance there for this movement, there's lots of them, but it's that the Nashville uh, prediction is based upon those, the release of those writings. Without that, we're probably not going to look as, in as much detail as as we did, because we wouldn't have had access to those unpublished manuscripts. But we also have July 17th, and then we also have July 18th. July 18th is going to be the Sabbath that the camp meeting occurs. I'm pretty sure there's a meeting on the 17th in the evening. I don't know who would have spoken. Um, and I know I didn't speak until like the 21st, I think, of July in 2015. So we're kind of stuck here. So what should we do? Because I don't have the answer. I don't, I don't have an answer here. Does anybody have any thoughts or suggestions what we could do? Okay. Um, Can you stay the, say the question again? Okay. So we have this verse that we're placing there, Judges 9, verse 5, and we're trying to see if we have a date in 2015 that can give us, that we can place on that line that connects with that verse, or are we to look to another verse, right? Because we have the year 2015, and we put July 17th initially, but now we're saying, well, is there anything in that verse that we can place that there? So that, that's the question.
a lot of silence here on this video, so. Yeah, so on the 17th, July 17th, you're actually gonna have Michael and Dwayne Dewey presenting in the evening, according to the schedule. And then I'm going to present um, on the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, three presentations on the, the basically the 5th, 6th. I'm going to present it on the trumpets, but I'm going to cover the, primarily the, the focus is Revelation 9, not Revelation 8, even though I do cover that. And Jeff is going to get there on the 22nd. He's going to present on the 22nd. So he probably gets there the 21st in the evening. Harminder is going to be presenting uh, on the, the 18th and the 19th. He does two presentations and then he does the last presentation of the evening. And he's going to present on uh, the beginning of ancient Israel, the end of ancient Israel, the beginning of modern Israel, the end of modern Israel. So that's what he presents. The camp meeting ends on the Sabbath, right, uh, which is the 25th. So we were marking, in this case, we were just marking the start of this camp meeting. Was that in September of the 15th? September? September 2015. Anything in September 2015? Not that I know of. Well, that's when they had a, they had a, had a um, September, September 20, 2015. Um, it's called the Wall of the wine vineyard they had a camp meeting they had a camp meeting in september yeah i got the i got the notes right here in my hand okay i i know i didn't go to the camp meeting in september um i, I know that that i was one of the, uh, the main points of discussion at the camp meeting because of my paper on uh you know, why there's not a 25, 20 year period of continual punishment for literal Israel found in Leviticus 26. Well, Michael Chapman did a study on the overturn, 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 the second coming. Okay. In Babylon and Media Persia. Okay. Was the first, was the first, um, That's what he was in. Okay. Yeah. So all we know is if we're going to take 9 verse 5, 9 verse 5 is going to deal with the 70 sons being killed upon one side and Jotham being left. And, and we're saying, does this relate to 2015 in any way? And we have, so far we have, well, July 16th the hundredth anniversary of Ellen White's death in which her writings are released. And that's going to relate to Nashville, right? That's primarily how we look at it. Um, we have also this 26th day of the fourth month symbol that's going to be presented at that camp meeting starting July 17th. We have the 18th. That's just simply, uh, a date that's symbolic, July 18, 2015. But the symbols that are in that verse, if we're going to use this verse, don't seem to relate to anything in 2015. Even if you bring in, uh, you know, the camp meeting in the fall. I mean, we could look at other things that were being presented at this time. So in, in 2015, um, you know, the main idea here is that we had the symbol of midnight, the midnight cry in 2014. That's going to be understood. And at the end of 2014, there's going to be introduced this idea of this prediction that we're going to make a prediction regarding uh, an attack on the United States or something regarding Islam, right? Okay, so Dwight says, remember the writings were released under threat. That is, if the General Conference did not release them, 
there was another party that had hacked the EG White website and would release them. Right. So I'm not sure how they hacked the EG White website. But anyway, they had access to the unpublished writings and they actually had started publishing them. Because I know people who bought um, uh, paper copies of these LNG White's writings, but I don't think they had released them all. And so then they were the, um, released by the E.G. White estate. So how does that relate then, uh, This because you have it in quotation? Yeah. Okay, so with the camp meeting, though, um, so, so the truths that are being presented in 2015, just overall in this movement, um, we had the midnight cry. But now the main truth that's that's going to be discussed is this idea that we're going to have this prediction regarding. And, and the way that Jeff put it to me, what I remember, is that there's going to be these attacks on the United States. Islam is going to be involved and that we're going to make a prediction about that. That's what I remember about 2015. Now. I ended up doing this study because all different kinds of circumstances. Okay, so a back door had been uh, found. Okay. Okay, what if we take these 70 sons to represent... Um, I mean, it's obviously the 70 weeks. But what if we, because it's this one sun that hides, would that hidden sun be something related to, is, is there some symbol that we can attach there to, to Islam? Okay, so we have the anniversary of Ellen White's death, right? It's going to be... Um, 153 days from the day that she has her fall to when she dies. So we have the symbol of 153. We have this July 18, 2020 symbol. Um, can we just take these three days? Can we say that this is, is related to this, this prediction of July 18, that it, it relates to this sun that is left, Jotham, and that relates to Ellen White's, the anniversary of Ellen White's death. And we're going to tie it to, because symbols that are here in this story, in Ellen White's death and burial, right, her, her first funeral, the July 17th date for this camp meeting, that middle date, can this, can we just say that this symbol of these 70 sons that are slain upon one stone, and the one that is left has to do with this hiding, right? He hid himself earlier. He's going to be left. Can we relate that to the 153 symbol of Ellen White from when she falls to when she dies? And then 100 years later, these writings are released. Because the truths that are here in 2015 have to do with this prediction right that that's primarily what 2015 is about right in 2016 the symbol that's going to be um studied you know we're going to have now midnight so that's going to we're going to attach that to the midnight cry so we're going to have midnight as a symbol and we're going to try to work this out and it's supposed to be the binding off but uh, we're going to see here what's significant is what happens on July 16th, one year later, um, that we get this symbol of the 391.5. So all of these things are then, that's going to be empowered, obviously, on October 13th, 2018. Yeah, the Islamic calendar begins on the Gregorian calendar. So if you take the Islamic calendar, it's going to start at sunset on July 18, right? That is, that's a Gregorian date. It's gonna start 
commencing that date. So technically, if we go to the Islamic calendar, um, so Islam is connected to all of this. I mean, that's what, one thing we can say. So, so technically speaking, the first day of the Islamic calendar begins on July 18th at sunset. That's going to be day number one on the Islamic calendar in 622. I know we're, we're, we're taking a lot of time. We've taken a lot of time just on this one point, basically, in, you know, an hour. Uh, and we haven't really got anywhere. So I, I'm not sure what the answer to this is. All I know is that we have this verse and I think that this must be uh, the verse that that we would use. <clears throat> okay so can we relate this son that is left jotham the 70 week 70th week can it be related at all to these dates july 16th 17th and 18th in 2015 Because normally we would think of that as the 70 week prophecy. Right. I don't have an answer. Yeah, and it's 622 that the Islamic calendar is July 18th, to just clarify that. <clears throat> now, when we deal with 622, remember we have 622 a.m. What happens at 622 Anno Monday? Who's born? Enoch. Enoch is going to be born, right? And then um, when he's 65, he's going to have Methuselah, right? Is that correct? And then he's going to live, yes. then he lives for 300 years. So he lives for 365 years because he's going to be translated. Okay. And Methuselah is 187 when he has Lamech, right? Yes. So, okay. And Lamech lives for 777 years. So we have 65 and the 187 together, those are 252, right? In that in that story, that line. Um, and of course, we've related that to our lines in different ways. The 65 is 65 years. That's the prophetic mirror of the 252 years, 25, 20 years, right? So 252 being a symbol of that. And of course, the 777 structure. So I think there's something that we would have to say, because when we study the Lamex, it is related to this um, uh, 777 structure, right? It's also related to uh, the symbols for July 18th and the 2520. 
And the two lemmings are related to the 70 weeks. And we know that we have uh, 770, that's the 70 times 7 curse of the Lamech, who's the descendant of Cain, and the 777 years. 777 years can be represented by 7 times 7 times 7 being 343, and the 62 weeks being 434 added together, right? So, so we have these symbols here. Uh, the release of Ellen White's writings, which are going to relate to Nashville, uh, the start of that camp meeting and the following day, the first Sabbath of that camp meeting, the truths that are going to be unfolded at that camp meeting regarding uh, Islam. And so all that happens, her writings are released, we have the camp meeting the next day, and then the next day is the July 18th. So I still would prefer to use these dates here, but we're just expanding it. And at that camp meeting, we're going to have this information regarding Islam. And that inter information regarding Islam is connected to the 70, 70 weeks prophecy, to the week of Christ study. But, you know, everything's kind of connected. But I, I think the significance here is the one that is left, the 70th week, which um, is going to be a truth that's unfolded in 2018, Right. I mean, it's it's not even represented there in 2018, other than uh, it's going to be uh, connected to the understanding of the predictions of time. So hopefully that's that gets us somewhere. I don't know where it gets us, other than we spent a lot of time thinking about this and getting a headache. But I want you to think about it more before we come to more, because we, we need to find these verses. We need to to be able to show this simply, that these verses, Jotham's line relates to these dates. And if it doesn't, then we have to revise this. <clears throat> okay. And let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study here this morning. We know that uh, we're struggling with these things, but we know that uh, sometimes we need to struggle uh, before we can receive light and understanding. And we know, Lord, that there's things in our lives that hinders us from seeing truth. Help us to be obedient to all the things you reveal to us, to reveal and to develop a Christ-like character. And be with each person. May your he healing hand be upon Dwight. He can get his voice back. And um, we pray that you can be with each person studying these truths. Be with us now throughout this day. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.